for the Bible declares that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. Oh, how blessed we are, how wonderful it is to be here on this wonderful Good Friday. I think it's been about two Good Fridays since we were able to assemble. Praise the Lord, because we are here today. Amen. Almost like it used to be, and everybody looks so good and so bright and so shiny on this Good Friday, and it is a Good Friday. Amen. Amen and amen, and uh, I don't think nobody brought a lunch bag, and our dining room is not open, so that we don't, that means that we don't intend to be here all day. Amen. Amen and amen. Let us stand. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. At this time, we have our opening prayer by Minister Tiffany Curtis of the Second Mount Zion Church. Amen. Lord God, right now, we just come before you, and we thank you for your presence already being in this place. We ask, God, that no matter what we've been going through this week, today, God, that we would set it all aside, that your Holy Spirit will have his way in this place on today, that you will bless the pastors, the angels of the various houses, God, that will bring forth the word, God, a word that will heal, correct, and allow us to continue to live in these unprecedented times as your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now, ushers, now, if folk are not comfortable, we ask that you would wear your mask at all times. And if they are not comfortable, there are still seats upstairs. Amen. So you can spread out. And if that's not enough, uh, we can use the overflow behind the pulpit. Amen? Amen. Because we want everybody to be, everybody to be comfortable. Amen. Our congregational hymn, At the Cross.
and the Bronx. Amen. Amen. Reverend Martin, you can come right on down. Amen. You can bring your daughter with you, too. Reverend Martin, why don't you, why don't you just come on and take a seat up here, and that way you'll, you'll leave room for somebody else. Yes. Amen. That's, that's, the over, that's the overflow for the day. And uh, amen. All right, now, uh, here, here is the lineup. Uh, Pastor Billy Thompson is going to give us a selection, and after the selection, Bishop uh, Samuel B. Atkins, pastor of the First United Baptist Church, he's going to come with the first word. Amen. And then, and then after he finishes, uh, Pastor Harry Moore Sr., the Mount Olive Baptist Church, is going to give us the second word. And after he finishes, Pastor Darian Brown from the Rome Emanuel Baptist Church is going to give us the third word. And then the, after he finishes, the Reverend Torrance D. Griffith of the First African Baptist Church will give us the fourth word, and then we will pause for station identification and take the offering. Amen. Well, we won't, we won't really take it, but you're going to give an offering. Amen. And, uh, and uh, there will be baskets up front. There will be baskets up front and ba baskets in the balcony. So you can just make it to your, make it to uh, uh, yourself in, to, in the balcony. You can just make it to some of the baskets. And uh, the same will be down here. And, uh, and then we'll have another selection. Oh, well, after we take the offering, uh, uh, we'll move from there in that order. Amen? Yeah. Amen. It's so good to see y'all. Yeah. Amen. We've been off for two years. Oh, what a, oh, what a joy it is. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. One, there we go. Come on, everybody put your hands together. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory. Everybody say, oh, I'm so glad, oh, Jesus lifted me, oh, I'm, oh, oh, Jesus lifted me, oh, I'm so glad, oh, Jesus lifted me, singing glory, oh, Jesus, let me take it up, oh, I'm so glad. Was 
in trouble. Oh, Jesus. One more time. Oh, I'm so glad. Hey. Oh, I'm so yeah, Jesus. Oh, I'm so oh, Jesus. Come on, let's stay here. Sing it. Say it again. Sing it. Say it like you mean it. Oh. One more time. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me if he lifted you this morning. Come on, give him a praise right there. Hallelujah. He is a lifter. Yes, he is. a blessing to be with you after sharing the spot for over 35 years. Late pastor for Man Island. We organized this seven last word fellowship. I was really young then. I'm so grateful for the host pastor and all of the clergy who share this moment with me. And it's a blessing to look out and to see you. It's nothing that I've done but what the Lord has done for me. And I want to, I want, I want, I want to thank him because he didn't have to do it. Thank the Lord for this beautiful edifice. When I, when I, when I came in, I thought about what my mama used to sing. Used to sing, when I get to heaven, I'm going to shout all around. Limpid. All around God's kingdom. I want to thank you for allowing me to share this spot with me. Beautiful edifice, isn't it? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And I'm grateful to God because all of these 35 years. Amen. 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 Reverend Moore came on to Man Alley, oh. and we told him to come on over. My recollection recall me, I heard that Pastor Moore was at Second Man Zion here. I said, come on in. Amen. Then all of the rest join in the band. All of the rest. Let me hear you. Let me hear you say, yeah. I give honor and praises to the Most High God. And it is a blessing to share this moment with you. We greet you from First United. Amen. Amen. So many things have happened, and I 
counted a blessing when you had an opportunity to come together and share in a fellowship like this. I want to ask you to turn with me. I believe I have the word here on. We, we will turn with me a few minutes to the 23rd chapter of St. Luke. 23rd chapter of St. Luke. Amen. The first word that Jesus hanged on the cross, then say Jesus. Amen. No mind what other folks say, but always listen to what Jesus said. Some folks just talk to be talking. Amen. But the, but the first word said, so then Jesus, I believe somebody in here know who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the man that robed himself in 42 generations. Amen. Amen. Born on the hill of Bethlehem because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah. In the 34th verse of the 23rd chapter of St. Luke, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lot. What a mighty God we serve. After going through torment all of the many hours before, he had time to pause as he hung on the cross and looked down on mankind. I'm glad he looked down on me one day. Picked me up, turned me around, put clapping in my hand. Joy in my heart. Jesus said, Father, do anybody here know the Father? I serve a triumph God. He God the Father, and he God the Son, and he God the Holy Ghost. Thank God Jesus said, don't mind what other folks say, but you listen at what Jesus said. Let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. I hear them say, Father. Yeah. Every morning when I get up, I look up, I say, Father. Yeah. You know why? Because he didn't have to wake me up. Start me on another day during that. Let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. I thank him because he do and he rules and he hold all power in his hand. Then said Jesus, don't mind what other folks say, but what Jesus said, after being whipped all night, going through trials, tribulation, but he paused long enough, said, Father, well, I want you to forgive them for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lot. And the people stood beholding the rulers also with them, derailed him, saying, he saved others? Let him save himself. If he be Christ, amen, let him come down from the cross. Isn't that all right? Yes, sir. But Jesus uh, didn't hold no malice there. Because a lot of folks hold a whole lot of malice there. I'm so glad. Are you glad about it? When Jesus hung on the cross, that old rugged cross, let me hear you say, yeah. Somebody's at the cross where I first saw the light. Are you glad about it? 
Can you see him hanging on the cross? Whipped all night long. Amen. But thank God he stopped as he hung on the cross and looked up to his father and said, Father, I want you to forgive them. If we had more forgiveness in our heart, the world would be better today. Oh, yeah. Got to get malice out your heart. Let me hear you say, yeah. Something happened 30 years ago. Still carrying that load. But are you glad about it? I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm so glad. Are you glad about it? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I come by to tell you this hour that Jesus said. Amen. Do you know Jesus? Anybody here know Jesus? Anybody here know my Lord? Somebody said he's the Lord of Lord. He's the King of King. He's the Lily of the Valley. He's the bright and the morning star. Somebody said he's my doctor. Oh yeah. In a sick room. Let me hear you say yeah. Somebody said he walks with me. Oh, he talks with me. He tells me I am his own. I'm so glad. I used to hear my mama sing. When I get to heaven, I'm going to shout. I'm going to shout all around God's kingdom. Let me hear you say, yeah. Jesus said, Father, I want you to forgive them for they do not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lot. And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them deride him, saying he saved other. Oh, he could do that now. And he let him come down from that cross. I'm so glad I serve a mighty Savior. I'm so glad he stood on, he hung on that cross. Are you glad about it? I hear him say, Father, when I get up in the morning, I say, Father, I want you to walk with me. I want you to talk with me. With all of the evilness, all of the virus that's going around, are you happy about Jesus? I'm happy. I'm happy with Jesus alone. Can you hear him say, Father, I want you to forgive them. Oh, the church would be better. The community would be better. The world would be better if we had more forgiveness in our hearts. Oh, yeah. If you had the love of God, he put clapping in your hand, dancing in your feet. Oh, he give you a testimony. I'm so glad. Are you glad? Isn't he all right? Is well? It is well. It is well with my soul. Jesus said, Father, I want you to forgive them for they do not what you do. I'm glad he stayed on the cross. I'm so glad he looked down and said, Father, I want you to forgive them for they do not what they do. My brothers and my sisters, are you glad he didn't come down? I'm glad he stayed there. Are you glad about him? Want to make it all right? Want to walk with you? Want to talk with you? I'm glad he said, Father, 
forgive them. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. My brothers and my sister, hold on. Pray the Lord. Here's my bridge over deep of troubled water. God bless you. Let me hear you say, Father, I want you to do what? What do you want him to do? Yeah. What do they want him to do? Yeah. Why? Because they don't know what to do. Let me hear you say, yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they speak to you sometimes, and sometimes they don't. But they don't know what to do. But ain't God good? Do you know the Lord? Isn't it a lily of the valley? Isn't it a bright in the morning star? You talk to them in a sick room? Let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. Father. Father. That's the right one to call. Father. Father. What I want you to do, forgive them. Yeah. For they know not what they do. that precious and powerful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, which is the Christ that was hung up for our hang-ups, bled and died, and on the third day was resurrected. To all of these very fine pastors that it take to make up this cluster of churches, our senior pastor, Bishop Atkins. Let's show some love for Bishop Atkins. We praise God for, for him. Thank God for Elder Johnson, yeah. Pastor Griffith, Pastor Darian Brown, and our host pastor, Pastor James Moore. Amen. And to, and to all of the other preacher proclaimers, in this gospel ministry. It's, it's good to be here. Yeah, it's, it's good to be here. And I praise God for all of you. Y'all look so good. I miss y'all. So you're supposed to say back, yeah, we miss you too. That's the way you do it. Yeah, we miss you. We miss you. We miss you. Nothing like church. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. Let have uh, Sister Mary L. Moore uh, uh, with us today. Wave your hand, baby. Let them know you're in the house. Amen. My Oliver, stand wherever you are. Want to make sure? Yeah, stand up, my Oliver. You, they are here. They are all over the building in the balcony. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Y'all remain standing now. What actually I need you to do? After the day, take off the rest of the day, take off Saturday. We see you Sunday at 930. God bless you. Thank you for coming. The mother of the church is here, Sister Jenny Allen. Uh, Sister Mary Johnson, is Mary Johnson here? Where, Mary Johnson, where are you? Okay, okay. I have something for her. Look, there is a word. There is a word. Luke chapter number 23, uh, let me read just a, uh, well, four or five verses, won't deal with probably one or two, but uh, in lieu of time, let me read Luke 23, Genesis at verse number 39, you'll find these words, and one of the male factors which were hanged rail on him, saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him, saying, does not Thou fear God, seeing 
thou art in the same condemnation. And we indeed justify, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto him, Jesus, watch the text as it unfolds. Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou come into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, uh, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Did I mention Pastor Darren Brown? All right, I got him. Yeah. Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. For the next 17 minutes, I want to talk from the subject of reward granted. Reward granted. It was no accident that the Lord of glory was crucified between two thieves. When Pilate gave orders that the Lord Jesus should be crucified between two male factors, all unknowing to himself, he was putting into execution the eternal decree of God and his fulfilling of the prophet. 700 years before this Roman officer gave his commandment, God had declared through Isaiah the prophet that the son should be numbered with the transgressions. Yet how utterly unlikely this appeared that the Holy One of God should be numbered with the unholy. Was not our, our blessed uh, Lord crucified with the thief to fully demonstrate the unfathomable death of shame unto which he had descended. At his birth, he was surrounded by the beast of the field, and now at his death, he is numbered with the humanity, sinners, thieves, again, was not the Savior numbered with the transgression to show us the position, to show us the position he occupied as our substitute. He had taken the place of us, the place that was due us. The two male factors were being crucified together. They were equally near to Christ, one on the right and one on the left, one on the right and one on the wrong side. Both of them saw and heard all the transpired for those last six hours. Both were notary wicked. I said they were wicked. Both were suffering acutely. Both were dying and urgently need of forgiveness. Yet one of them died in sin. One of them died to sin. And the Savior died for sin. Yes, Lord. While, while the other repented, his wickedness believed in Christ, called on him for mercy. It is also remarkable that the thief conversion took place before the supernatural phenomenon of the day. He cried, Lord, remember me. Before the hour of darkness, before the hour of triumph, cried out, it's finished. Before the rending of the temple veil from the top to the bottom, before the quaking of the earth and the shivering of the rock, before the centurion confessed, truly this got to be the Son of God. God purposely said his conversion before these things so that his sovereign grace might be manifested and the sovereign power acknowledged that God uh, yeah had designed it this way God help me if you please but my brothers and sisters I, I see this thief on the right side not the one on the wrong side not the one on the left side he, he said Lord Jesus 
Remember me when I come into the kingdom. Re re remember me and several things I, I see here Pastor Mason first of all I see the sight in the request he does not see uh, a bleeding savior he see the Lord Jesus he said Lord remember me he did not ask for a Cadillac he did not ask for the creature coffers of the world he did not ask for a home he did not say he wanted to be in paradise he said remember me not only I see the sight in the request I see the singleness of the request it's right there in the Bible he said remember me he didn't say remember my mama didn't say, remember my brother he, he says in so many words it's me it's me oh Lord that stands in the need of prayer yeah so not only I see the sight in the request Lord not only I see the singularity remember me but I see something else in this text, Robert. I see the sureness in the request. Pastor Griffin, he did not say, if you come into your kingdom. No, he said it with confidence. He said, when you come in to your kingdom, remember me. Not only I see this sight, in the request, Lord. Not only I see the singularity of the request, remember. Not only I see the sureness in the request, when, yes, Lord. But I also see the stewardship in the request. I tell you, oh, when I stood, request granted can I get a witness I see the stewardship in the request can I get a witness he had a very short window to confess can I get a witness he didn't have very long to do what he had to do. <laughs> yes, Lord, I see the change in this thief attitude. Yes, Lord, I hear him telling the thief on the left. I see him telling the thief on the wrong side of the cross. You ought to shut up. We deserve what we are going to get. But this man had done no wrong. Can I get a witness? I don't know about you, but remember me. Can I get a witness? Yes, Lord. No one, none other than him was requesting deliverance to her. Yes, Lord. Can I tell you, if you call on him, you will get an answer. I heard the Lord say, yes, Lord, verily, yes, Lord, surely, I say unto thee, yeah, Lord, and verily is the language of certainty. Today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. I told you that the request was granted. Yes, Lord, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, not next year, but today, yes, Lord, thou shalt be with me in paradise. I got to get out of here, but I feel my helper coming. Yes, Lord, he saw himself as a sinner, but he saw Jesus as a savior. Yes, Lord, I tell you, this was Jesus, 
last companion on earth. Can I get a witness? But you need to know the last shall be first and the first shall be last. It was his last companion on earth, but it was his first companion in paradise. I don't know about you, but I thank God one day when I was sinking so deep in sin, far away from the peaceful shore, I was too mean to live, and I wasn't fitting to die. I cried until the Lord, Lord, remember me. Yeah, ain't your life? And the Lord heard my cry and pitied my every knee. I'm going to hold on and I want to serve notice on you. I want to let you know that my request was granted from me and that's the reason I can say for God I live and for God I die. I said ain't he alright? Ain't he alright? Or this thief he was never baptized. This thief had never been given the right hand of fellowship. This thief had never went to Sunday school. This thief, yeah, this thief had never been voted in by some deacon. Yeah, but this thief knew who to call on when you want to get an answer. Call on the Lord. I said, ain't he all right? I know he's all right. I said, ain't he all right? I said, won't he do it? Do you love him? Yeah. I said, do you love him? Yeah. When you're going through the valley of the shadows of the death, just tell the Lord, remember me. You're trouble in the hole. Remember me. Yeah. It's been two years. I want to get two extra minutes. Sire. Can I holler for myself? Ain't he alive? Won't he do it? Whoa, 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 whoa. On Christ, a solid rock I stand. Oh, all of the grounds are sinking sand. Say, I. Bishop Atkins has already 
express tenures with this cluster. And um, I don't want to get put out. And so, uh, Pastor Mason, uh, even if you don't, uh, I'm sure Pastor Moore would want you to come and sit up here. Amen. John chapter 19. Verse 25, the New King James Version of the Bible reads thusly. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple, whom he loved, standing by. He said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Pastor James Moore, I want to talk about an exit strategy. An exit strategy. The song writer says that awful day will surely come. The appointed hour make haste when I must stand before my judge and pass the solemn test. All of us are going to die. Exit strategy. And so if we're going to die, we need to have an exit strategy. Exit strategy, you need to have some life insurance. You don't want to die and have folk crying twice. <laughs> crying because you died and crying because they need to raise some money to bury you. You need a, an exit strategy. And then you need to do something with your assets, your real property, things that are titled. Uh, you need to do something with that. But then there are real special gifts, things that are near and dear to you that nobody can get other than the ones that you leave it to. You probably don't have that problem in your family, but when folk in my family die, folk just show up. They haven't been there to wipe mama's nose. Haven't been there to fix a meal, clean the house. But just as soon as the loved one dies, folk in my family show up and saying, mama would have wanted me to have this. But Jesus, on his way, out, he had an exit strategy. Story is told about a mother who was elderly. I'm almost through. She had three sons. And they all tried to outdo each other on Mother's Day. One of the sons gave the mother a brand new Bentley with a driver. The, 
The other son gave his mother a mansion with a butler and a maid. The other son, he gave his mother a bird that could speak five languages and speak them fluently. And so she called them all together the day after Mother's Day. And they all started, Mom, how did you like the gifts? Well, she said, you can take that car back because I don't get out much. And she said, you can keep that uh, mansion. I, I'm, I'm okay with where I'm living. But she said, that sure was some good chicken. And that boy got upset. Mama, do you know how expensive that bird was, can speak all those languages? She said, well, he should have said something. Good Friday was the last day of Jesus's life on earth before his resurrection. He was betrayed by Judas, denied by Peter, and according to Matthew 26 and 56, all of his disciples forsook him and they fled, even the one that he loved. He was arrested and he was placed on trial falsely. He was condemned, he was beaten, he was mocked, and he re was required to carry his own cross to the place where the crucifixion, and he died. Soldiers, they twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Though he was offered something to dull the physical pain, Jesus refused. He chose to face the pain of death head on. They stripped him of his clothes and cast lots, fulfilling the scripture. Crucifixion, a man, they would damage the tibia. That's the larger of the two bones, Pastor Harry Moore, in the lower leg. They would fracture it in two, with sharp slivers perhaps to hasten his suffocation by making it virtually impossible for him to push up on the vertical beams, an action that was required to sustain. Although Jesus was crucified through the forearm, it is possible to do so through the palm, contrary to what some others have said. During the crucifixion, my brothers and my sisters, oftentimes a small peg or block of wood was fixed midway up the vertical beam, providing a seat, if you will. Its purpose was to prevent a premature collapse, thus prolonging the victim's agony. Whether tied to the cross or even nailed, the victim endured countless suffering. And amidst the cruel and unfair and unjust painful death, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus, he still had an exit strategy. When Jesus, the Bible says, saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved nearby, Jesus had something special. He said, woman, here is your son. Do I have a witness? All of us have, like the disciples, we have walked away from the Lord. You blame it on the pandemic, you got the PPP loans, you got the uh, stimulus package, and you still won't get right with the Lord. The Bible says they forsook him and he fled away, but, but the reality is this, even though you got away, you got you to know how to get back 
to Jesus. And if you get back to Jesus, my brothers and my sisters, number one, he will pardon you for your past. All, all of us have a past. All of us have some skeletons in our closet. All of us are ex-somethings. But in spite of your past, how many know the Lord will pardon you from your past? Not only will he pardon you from your past, but when you get back to him, Deacon Moore, he will give you provisions for the present. Is there anybody that knows what happened when you came to Jesus? Do I have anybody? I, I, I remember when I came to Jesus, I was wearied, I was worn and sad. But I found in him a resting place, and, and he has made me glad. I, I tell you, the Lord will, he will pardon you for your past. He, he, he will give you provisions for your present. Uh, thank God he will uh, give you prosperity for your pilgrimage. Uh, do I have a witness in the building? Uh, here it is, Jesus, he's on his way to die and yet he's still giving out gifts. He didn't give his mother the cause. He didn't give his mother the house, but he gave his mother the disciple whom he loved. Is there anybody in here that knows that God will make a way? Oh, I've had some good days, and God knows I've had some hills to climb. I've had some lonely days, and I've had some sleepless nights, but when I I begin to look around and I begin to think things over. All of my good days, they outweigh my bad days. I won't complain. I'm talking about an exit strategy and as I go to my seat, I'm reminded when my grandmama was in the Einstein Hospital and she called me to her bedside. She said, grandson, I don't have anything to leave you. I don't have any houses to leave you. I don't have any cars to leave you, but what I will leave you is this. She says, I want you to learn how to lie. I want you to learn how to beg, and I want you to learn how to steal. Do I have a witness in the building? I said, Grandmama, you used to whip me for lying. Do I have a witness in the building? She says, every once in a while, son, you got to stack down and lie at Jesus' feet. I said, okay, Grandmama, I got that. But now she said you need to learn how to beg. Grandma, you told me to get my own. She says, I'm not talking about that. She says, you got to learn how to beg for forgiveness. I said, okay, Grandma, I got it. You want me to learn how to lie. And you want me to learn how to beg. But now you're telling me to steal. She says, when the storms of life are raging and you just can't find your way, when you need to get away from it all. You need to learn how to steal away. His spray shall continually be. You got it. Amen. That's for short people. <laughs> amen. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth to the angel of this house, uh, Pastor James Moore, Sr., Bishop Atkins. Ella Johnson, and Pastor Harry Moore, and Pastor Thompson, Pastor Brown, and Pastor Marcus in his absence. It's certainly good to be in the house 
of the Lord. The text in Matthew chapter 27, verse 45 and 46. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I want to talk to you for five minutes on he still cares. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Amen. Amen. There's an old song, you abandon me. Love don't live here anymore. We got some old school people up in the house. Somebody felt abandoned. And there are many of us in our lives. We felt abandoned at some point or the other. Some who have been abandoned by parents, particularly those who have been adopted, not knowing who their birth parents are. There are babies who've been left on doorsteps at police stations, abandoned by their parents. There are those and maybe some in here whose husband or wife walked out on them, abandoned. There's a lady, my wife and I, and, and my wife is here, need to recognize, amen, amen. amen. We met her one day at the fruit stand. She was a shell of what she used to be. We'd often go to the Hilton, she'd serve us, always joyful. But then she announced to us one day that she was getting married. She'd look forward to being married one day. Then we hadn't seen her for a while. And when we saw the fruit stand, I did not recognize her but my wife did. As I said, she was a shell of what she used to be. And when we finally got into the conversation, she said, you know, I have stage four cancer. The doctors have not given me long to live. And so in trying to comfort her, I said, well, bless the Lord that you have a husband. And then the sadness enveloped her face. Her countenance changed. She looked depressed. She said, he abandoned me. He said he did not sign up for that. Have any of you been down that street? Abandoned by somebody? Take a trip with me down memory lane because if any of us would go down that memory lane, we would realize that at some point or the other, we were abandoned. Here it is that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is hanging on a cruel pulpit, nailed between two thieves from the time to issue a word of forgiveness, from the time to issue a word of salvation, from the time to issue a word of compassion, and then the scene changes. He now deals with his personal 
grief is paying his issues. He talks about himself to the Father. He extracts a verse from Psalm 23. My God, my God, why did you or why are you forsaken me at this time? There's darkness all around the cross. And this we learn that when God removes his presence, there is darkness. When God removes his presence from your home, there is darkness. When God removes his presence from the church house, there is darkness. That's why in many churches there's so much mess because God is not in the church house. As Pastor Marcus would say, God is not in the gathering place. When God removes his presence from your life, there is darkness. If you don't believe me, ask King Saul. For when God left him, Saul became evil. There was darkness all around the cross because the Son of God had come to be sin for us. He'd come to bear on the tree all the past sins, the present sins, and the future sins of humanity. You, you know that you've sinned a lot. You, you know that you've sinned a lot yesterday. Many of us know that we still have sin in our lives, and many of us are acutely aware that sometime tomorrow... And here it is that Jesus is hanging on this cross with, with the burdens of the world on him. One, one preacher said that he came treading the winepress of the wrath of God. And so he cries out to the Father because darkness is all around. Not only is there darkness all around, but blindness was all around the cross. Folks who did not see him for who he is. The Messiah of the world who came to save, to seek and to save that which was lost. And yet they could not see it. But he's lonely on the cross. He's lonely because it seems as though he's been abandoned by his daddy. Father that he had close relationship with, he'd always talk to the father. Do you talk to him? Do you talk to him in the morning? The songwriter says, whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening to keep your heart in tune. Do you know why? Because God answers prayers in the morning. God answers prayers at noon. God answers prayers in the evening. So keep your heart in tune. Jesus knew that his father was always in touch with him. That's why in the garden of Gethsemane, he talked to the father. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. I don't want to do this, but not my will, but thy will be done. I've been talking to you all the time, daddy. I'm going to leave it up to you, not my will, but now on the cross. As he hangs on this cross, the father seemed to be far from him because darkness has taken over the place. But I want to let you know that the father did not disappear. The father could not look on sin. The father cannot deal with sin. But the father was still there. You know, one night we were putting our daughter to bed some time ago. She was young at the time and quite afraid of the dark. And as we were leaving her room, she called out to my wife and I and she said, don't leave me. I'm afraid of the dark. And we said to her, we're not leaving you. If you feel afraid, just call out and we will answer. Now Jesus said, my God, my God, why 
have you forsaken me? But the fact of the matter is Jesus knew that his father was listening. Can you hear me? Isn't that the Verizon slogan? Can you hear me now? Jesus was simply asking the father, can you hear me? And it's really a word for all of us that God will never abandon you. It's a word for all of us that God will never leave you, nor forsake you. No matter where you've been or no matter who you've been with or no matter where you plan to go, God is always with you. I know you got it in your house, but there's a poem in almost every home. It's called Footprints. And here it is that this person is talking to God because he believed that God had abandoned him in his most trying and critical period. And after he spoke to God and said, I only see one set of footprints in the sand. It was then God's time to speak. And God said to him, listen now, when, when you were in your pain and in your anguish, when you were in your sickness, I was carrying you. The footprints that you saw, they were not your footprints, but they were my footprints. What God was simply saying is, I care for you and I will never abandon you. And that's why the songwriter said on the way to my seat, does Jesus care? When my heart is pained too deeply for murder song, when the burdens press and the cares distress and the days are weary and long, and then the songwriter answers the question. He said, oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior care. And so when I'm sick and I can't get well, I know that Jesus cares. When my body is racked with pain, I know my Savior cares. When my friend abandoned me, I know my Savior cares. When there's no way to go, I know my Savior cares. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. Do I have a witness in the house? Isn't his heart touched with your grief? When the days are weary, the long nights weary, I know, yes, I know, my Savior, he cares. Have not we been blessed already today? Amen. We've had a great time. Thank you. You've been such a kind audience. Amen. Nobody moving. James Davis. Did James Davis leave? James Davis. Where? Where is he? He left. Okay. 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 We're getting ready to give an offering, and for this these cluster of churches. Um, and we, we want to make it easy. There's only two ways to give today. Only two ways. Uh, cash. Uh, yeah. on, the, on the premise given. Now, those of you that just don't have it, there is a cash app that you can use, and it's authentic. Uh, uh, the seven pastors have sanctioned it. Uh, Mount Olive is not getting it, but we're using Mount Olive Cash App. Now, that cash app is, that cash app is dollar sign, M-O-B-C, 638 dollar sign M O B C 638 dollar sign M O B C 638 dollar sign M O B C 638 and Mount Olive is not getting it the cluster of churches Amen. Now we're going to give and uh, a amen. I hope, amen. How are we going to do this? Uh, baskets upstairs or y'all going to walk? So they, they don't have to come down? Okay, since you don't come down, now everybody in the balcony, you ought at least for walking up there, you ought at least give $20. Yeah, for going to the balcony. Yeah, man. Amen. 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 Now, Dirt, how are we going to, I mean, Deacon uh, Simpson, how are we going to do it? Here's my 20. All the preachers are going to give. 
Huh? Want everybody? They can do it real fast. I mean, it's yeah. been two years. Yeah. Oh, start from the back. Yeah, start from the back. Back there where Mason at. Mason is not coming because he's going to cash out his, uh, or put $100 in. How are we going to do it? Come on, everybody stand. Come on, let's get this. Amen. We got three more good, great preachers. Three more great preachers. I need a musician. I need a musician. I need a musician that can play the organ. I need somebody to play the organ. Because Thompson is our next preacher. I need an organ player. Because I need to give him a break. I need to give him a break. Come on, let's get it. Thank you, doctor. Amen. God bless. Thank you so very much. Amen. Three more preachers. We'll be out just as soon as we get out. You don't want to miss these last three. have an opportunity to give? Did everybody have an opportunity to give? Did everybody take the opportunity to give? Did we miss somebody? God knows I don't want y'all to accuse us of rushing this thing. Amen. He didn't give us time. I had something. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Amen. Deacon Moore, why don't you bless this offering? Stand up on your feet. Right from the floor. You know how to do it. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, Jordan, take this and get, get you a good mic. I need you to get, yes. Oh, you got some extra mic? Okay. All right. All right. Host pastor said, put that down, Harry. He got the extra mics up here. I'm sorry. I apologize. All right. Okay. Amen. You're going to give us a selection, and we're just overworking. Let's give some love for Pastor Billy Thompson. Amen. Amen. They're going to give us a half a verse, and then he will come with the fifth word. Is that all right? Amen. I need the 
Dio Anybody else need the Lord in this room? I dare you to lift your hands and help me sing it. Oh, I need the oh, I. Clap your hands and give him praise. What an appropriate song. I need the oh, I need thee to this great collection of preachers, to our host pastor, Pastor Moore, to Pastor Mason and all of the ministers that are here. We want to look at this fifth word St. John 19 28 it says after this Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, let the church say amen. that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith I thirst. Just look at your neighbor and say, stay thirsty, my friend. With the war crimes that are happening between Russia and the Ukraine, with 460 non-fatal and 116 fatal shooting victims in our city as of April 2022 with the reinstatement of the indoor mask mandates here you would think that our religious community would be passionate about returning to the house of God but the global church seems to have lost her thirst. 
Mother Teresa had a sign placed above the entrance to the chapel in all of her missions around the world, and it read, I thirst, I quench. When she was asked about the sign, Mother Teresa said that she desired to satiate the thirst of Jesus on the cross for the love of souls. About 9 a.m. in the morning, Jesus was lifted up on that cross. And he hung there for about six hours. And for the first three hours, he gave three statements. And all of them were about other people and not about him. Now, I know that we have a lot of people caught up in the I theology. And there's nothing wrong with self-care. But it's important to note that even in death, Jesus put others first. In the first word of forgiveness, he said, Father, forgive them. In the second word of salvation, he spoke to a criminal next to him on the cross and said, the truth is, today you will be with me in paradise. The third word of affection was directed to and about his mother Mary and his brother John. And then around 12 noon, a darkness that lasted about three hours covered the land and there was a lingering silence until Jesus cried out the fourth word of anguish to his father, my God. My God, wow. As thou forsaken me. Now, this brings us to the fifth word, where we find our suffering Savior uttering the words, I thirst. The fifth word is two words in English, but only one word in Greek dipso. I thirst. The fifth word gathered from these two verses, I believe it shows a picture of his suffering and his sovereignty. The scripture said after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. I have to pause right there because I know that you know somebody that's a know-it-all. Can I get a witness? And if you're not careful, they will jump into the darkest nights of your life with their unsolicited advice and tell you what they know. Sometimes they'll start off with, if I were you, uh, uh, but, but right there, right there, you've got to remember three things. Uh, number one, they are not you. We all are individually and uniquely made. They're not you. God has designed you with a specific, precious purpose. And you have to accept that sometimes there is pain attached to your purpose. Second Timothy 2 and 12 says, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Now, number two, you've got to remember that your steps are ordered by the Lord. See, you really don't know what somebody else is doing but your steps are ordered by the Lord. So even if you get off track, God will orchestrate roadblocks and detours that will help you turn back to him. So that problem, that storm, that situation that you're sitting in the middle of right now, God is watching and he's right there with you. And you must know this, that God has already equipped you with victory. 
So please understand, no matter how it feels or what it looks like, we have to stay in step with God's plan. You see, back in Mark, they already offered Jesus a drink. And that drink was mixed with gall that would have helped ease the pain. But Jesus refused to drink it. You see, some of us are thirsty for the quick fix. We're thirsty for the fast way out. We're thirsty for the things that will relieve the pain. We're thirsty for shortcuts that will remove the process and the work that is needed for us to mature properly. But Jesus knew that there was something still being accomplished through his pain. You see, when athletes are building strength and mass, they have to train with resistance exercises. Those exercises are used to create micro tears and stress in their muscle fibers. It's painful and it's uncomfortable. But in order for them to be able to carry more weight, they have to go through the process. You see, some of us are asking God for greater things. And some of us know that we were created for more. But when the weight and pressures of life begin to give us pushback, we step back. We get mad. We complain. We give up. We don't want to serve on the usher board no more. We get caught up with the crowd and the enemy tries to keep us distracted from our purpose. But you've got to stay focused on the plan of God and stay thirsty. Stay thirsty. There hath no temptation taken you. But such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you'll be able to bear it. So as I keep moving, Deacon, in verse 28, we see our suffering savior in his humanity thirsty because he had poured out himself like water. His strength was dried up like a pot shed. His tongue was cleaving to his jaws and he could see the dust of death before him but also in his divinity. He took a prophetic audit throughout all of the scriptures in the Torah, through the Psalms, through the Song of Solomon, through Ecclesiastes, all up in Malachi. And with him knowing all that had been accomplished, his thirst uh, went beyond uh, natural water. Uh, and Jesus uh, was thirsty for souls. Uh, I can't wait uh, until the church has a revival. Uh, there used to be a time uh, where we would be thirsty uh, for souls to come into the kingdom. Uh, we'd be thirsty uh, for healings to take place in the house of God. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that Jesus, uh, he remained thirsty uh, for the souls today. All the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust him and do not doubt the words that he said. I'll draw. I'll draw. 
all men unto me. When the church gets thirsty, we'll lift up Jesus. I wonder who will help me lift Jesus. Is there anybody here that can look back over your life when you could not find your way out? Jesus, Jesus, pick you up and turn you around, made a way out of no way. That's why you ought to tell somebody that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise be to God from whom all blessings flow. I'm grateful to God for the opportunity to be here among these great preachers attempting to just show up. They asked a man at a race thoroughbred race, why does he keep bringing that donkey? He said, I didn't bring my donkey to win. I just wanted you to know I was here. Amen. And, and, and I have concluded that these preachers don't play fair. Amen. They have, they have uh, done a tremendous job of depicting the, amen. The five last words of our Savior from the cross, I am assigned the sixth word, and he who comes after me is assigned the seventh word. And so therefore, I'm going to do what I need to do and get out of the way. Take me and my donkey and go home. <laughs> Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Bow your heads with me just for a moment. Eternal God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this very moment. We thank you for what we have already heard. God, now I would ask that you would speak yet again so these that have ears can hear. Do not allow me to teach anything or say anything that would cause anyone to stumble, but allow me to operate fully under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' marvelous and matchless name, we pray, amen. amen. Do me a favor, if you don't mind, everyone that can and will, will you please stand? Amen. On the count of three, I want everyone to shout amen. One, two, three. Amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. On the way home today, as my wife will be driving, I'm going to call my sister in Georgia, and I'm going to let her know that I stood up to preach and everyone in the church stood up. And shouted, Amen. And at least I would not be lying. Amen. The sixth word, the sixth word, the sixth word, John chapter 19, 
in the B portion of that verse, the Lord says, it is finished. It is finished. The word that I have is the word victory. It is finished victory. Amen. We understand with clarity because we've been around a while. We've been in church a while. We've gone to Sunday school and Bible study. So we are clear that the context of these words, it is finished, actually ties the finished work of Jesus at Calvary but it was a message to the Jews that the sacrificial process is no longer needed. You don't have to bring animals anymore to the temple to uh, stand in place of your sins. He said, I've already paid for it. It is, it is finished. And I'm, I, I don't know about you, but I am really excited about that because if the sacrificial process was still in place today, we wouldn't be able to get in here for all the animals coming down the street. And, 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 and you would bring an animal to the temple proportionate to your sin. So I don't know about you, but I probably would not have come with a dove. Amen. I'm just talking about me. I don't know about you, what size animal you would have brought. So I'm grateful to the Lord that he killed that system at Calvary. But then the other context tied to this is the word victory. And I am clear that there cannot be a victory without a plan. No one wins without planning to win. And so therefore, I want to talk about three areas of this victory, this plan that the Lord has left us with. One, there is the plan for victory. And then two, there is the prediction of victory. And then three, there is the path of victory. So say it with me, the plan of victory, the prediction of victory, and the path of victory. So the plan of victory in Genesis chapter 1, I want to read that real quick for you if you don't mind. Genesis chapter 1, and I want to focus on verse 27, the plan of victory. Verse 27, here it is. These words are found. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he. Male and female created he then. Now, we understand the male and the female were named Adam and Eve. But I don't want you to be confused about the plan for victory because the plan for victory was not installed on Adam and Eve. They were just players in the plan of victory. They were not the plan of victory. And how do we know they were not the plan of victory? Because the victory that God presents, watch this, is divine. And by it being divine, that means that it's rooted in his bosom and not man's bosom. God will never put a divine victory in the hand of humanity because humanity is flawed in all of his ways. Therefore, he can only put the plan of victory in the second Adam that was to come because the first Adam, watch this, it was already known that he and his wife was going to mess up. So the plan of victory was not spun after the fall in, in the garden. The plan of victory was spun before God created man and woman. Because the God that we serve is not a reactionary God. And I dare to serve somebody who can only react to what I'm going to do. I need for you to know that I'm going to mess up before I mess up. I need for you to have a plan of victory before I come out of the shoot. In other words, the the plan for victory was a divine plan orchestrated by God before he 
ever said, let there be. And so the plan of victory is not Adam and Eve. They fail, and then God predicted the victory. Wow. Watch this. Now let's look at the prediction of the victory found in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Are you there with me? Oh, I'm sorry. This is, yeah, I'm sorry. This ain't metropolitan. Let me stop. Uh, yeah, Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. He says, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Watch this. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy, and, they des, and thy desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of your wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of all of the days of thy life, thorns also. And then he gets to the point where he, where he announces to Satan, it's over for you as well. He said, he said, he said, the heel is going to bruise, but your head is going to be bruised. He predicts the victory, and the victory could come nowhere, not in Jerusalem, not in anywhere else except at Calvary. So the victory was predicted by God to open up the door and or give a preview of what was to come. Coming attractions. Coming attractions. The woman would have babies. Coming attraction. Eve could not be the one that would bring forth the second Adam. It had to be a virgin. Coming attraction. It had to be those that would shout, shout life and not death. The coming attraction must be those, watch this, who would testify that Jesus is Lord. The coming attraction. So the prediction, the prediction, the prediction was predicted back in Genesis before we ever got to Calvary, before we ever got to the New Testament. So now we have, and I'm almost done, we have the plan, we have the prediction, but then we have the path. The path of victory had to come and go through Jerusalem. The path of victory had to be in a place of God's desire where God could get the most attention of what was going to take place so that, watch this, you and I would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God was in the mix of the victory. So the path of victory had to go to Calvary. He had to be nailed to a cross. He had to bleed. He had had to die in order for there to be victory. So I'm done. Getting ready to go to the house. But we have we have we have the plan of victory. We have the prediction of the victory. And then we have the path of the victory. So what is there left to say? Well, I don't know about you, but I don't know what any of that has to do for me. I, I, I tried to make the connection to see if, in fact, I was either in the plan of the victory. I tried to see, uh, uh, Pastor Moore, if I was in the prediction of the victory. Then I also looked to see if I was indeed in the path of victory. And, 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 and I couldn't find anything. But it wasn't until I saw a quote from General Dwight Eisenhower that I began to see myself in the victory. Dwight Eisenhower said, there are no victories in discounted prices. There's no victories in discounted prices. In other words, you got to pay full price. And, 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 and then I began to see myself because I was excited about when I found out how much it cost. When I found out how much the victory cost. 
when I found out that the victory had a price tag that was above my head when I found out that victory was too far and too high for me to reach and when I found out that only Jesus had the wherewithal to pay for my victory that's when I begin to shout he paid it all he didn't come up short he paid it all anybody know what I'm talking about and so therefore I'm not defeated I'm walking around in victory V-I-C-T O-R-Y victory for Johnson and all that will come after him everyone that would believe that Jesus died for their sins everyone that would believe that he was buried and then James is going to tell you that he got up early 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 Sunday morning Are you in the victory? Yes, sir. We greet you once again in that name that is above every name, and that is the name of Jesus. Amen. How blessed we are, how wonderful it is, and, and what a marvelous time that we're having in the, in the name of the Lord. We thank God for all of these pastors. Amen. For, for such a dynamic worship service. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Torrance Griffins, Pastor Darian Brown, Bishop Atkins, Pastor Harry Moore, Pastor Elder Johnson and uh, Pastor Billy Thompson, and uh, also in the absence of my friend, Pastor Larry L. Marcus. Amen. 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 There is a word. There is a word. I want to use two passages of Scripture. Uh, John, John chapter, uh, now first of all, let me go to Luke. Luke chapter 23, and we'll begin reading at verse number 44. Listen to the words of the text. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. Yes, and when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, uh -huh. into thy hands yes, I commit my spirit. Yes. Having said this, he breathed his last. And then I want to look at John chapter 19 and verse number 32 and 33. Listen. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. And for a few moments, uh, I want to talk about a dying benediction. A dying benediction. Uh, benediction is normally given at the end 
of a worship service provided uh, blessings for those who had experienced God. Nobody has ever experienced what Jesus experienced. Therefore, he provides for himself a benediction. He provides for himself a blessing. And I know that, that many of you are saying is, what blessing did he get from being crucified? Father, he says, he's back in communion with the Father. Because you remember, you remember, Pastor Griffith says uh, he was abandoned. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? But now he's back in communion with the Father. And he says, so into, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. This was the last utterance of the Savior before he expired. Uh, while he hung on the cross seven times, his lips moved in speech. Seven is the number of completion or perfection. At Calvary, then, as everywhere, the perfection of the Blessed One were displayed. Seven is the number of rest in a finished work. He had finished the work that the Father had given him to do. But he didn't stop talking. The work was done, but he's still talking. And so in six days, God made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day, he rested, contemplating with satisfaction that while he had pronounced everything good, so here is Christ. A work has been given to him to do, and that work was now done. Just as the sixth day brought the work of creation and reconstruction to completion, so the sixth utterance of the Savior was, it is finished. And just as the seventh day was a day of rest and satisfaction, so the seventh utterance of the Savior brings him to a place of rest in the Father's hand. What better hands to be in than the Father's hand? Somebody said, historian says, and, and, and I believe him because I found it in Psalm 31 verse 5, that every Jewish boy before they went to bed, they would pray that prayer, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so Jesus was actually praying, and so the loud voice this time was not a voice of anguish, but a voice of joy. Yeah. Into thy hands, I commit my spirit. What a good place to land is in the hand of the Lord. Because you know, David did write Psalm 31, and, 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 and he is remembering when he messed up, when he had to go through some stuff, and, and God gave him a choice. He said, you can be at the hand of your enemies, you can be at the hand of nature, or you can be at my hand. And David said, let me fall in the hand of the Lord. Kind of like that prayer that we were taught when we were children. Now lay me down to sleep if I should die before I wake. I pray the Lord my soul to take. Father, into thy hands, I command my spirit. It is a noteworthy 
that this cry of the Savior is a utterance of the prophecy that was found in Psalm 31. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. What a word of satisfaction. What hands, what better hands to be in at the benediction of your own death than the hand of the Lord. Is, is there anybody here today who doubts where you're going to end up at? It may be a good chance. It may be a, 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 a perfect opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you will have a blessed benediction. Yeah, yeah. You, you can also have a dying benediction in the hand of the Lord. And, 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 and let, let, let me never be ashamed. Deliver me into thy righteousness and bow down thy ear and deliver me speedily. And so Jesus is still talking. The work is done. But all he has to do is give the benediction of his own life. He had experienced abandonment. He had experienced a promise. He had experienced security for his mama. And the work is done. And now he says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The first Adam, Pastor Johnson, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And he became a living soul. The second Adam breathed out the life and then he bowed his head in the laps of his shoulder. Crucifixion, my brothers and my sisters, did not kill Jesus. When he decided to die, they had beat him all, all night long. But when he decided to die, he breathed out the life, bowed, he was still in charge. In other words, he was still strong because a half dead man came cry with a loud voice. And so he cried with a loud voice. Yes, Lord bowed his head in the laps of his soul and gave the benediction of his own life and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. In other words, hold my spirit until I get ready to take it up again. Because I read in the Bible that Jesus said, no man can take my life. I've got to lay it down. Yes, Lord. And he didn't lay his life down because he had done something wrong. But he laid his life down because I had done something wrong and I know you're wondering uh, how come I read uh, I read uh, over in John uh, where they broke their legs uh, because crucifixion uh, it took from six hours to, to days to die because uh, crucifixion uh, was not just designed to kill you uh, but crucifixion uh, was designed to humiliate you. Uh, yes Lord and and really they tied them to the cross and it took days for them to die and they left them there for the elements to beat upon them they left them hanging on the cross so the buzzers could 
take the flesh off of their bone. He was humiliated out on a hill called Calvary. Yes, Lord. But yes, Lord. But the Passover was near and they had to get him off the cross. And so they broke the legs of the two thieves to hasten death because you got to get him down off the cross. But the miracle of crucifixion is that when they got to Jesus, he was already dead. Hey, hey. And so that tells me that crucifixion didn't kill him. Hey, hey. He died within a matter of three hours. Ain't the Lord all right? Because he was still in charge. I don't know how do you feel about it, but I so glad I'm glad that he gave a benediction because I am in that benediction because if I follow him I'm going to be persecuted but I hear Paul saying they that love the Lord they shall suffer persecution but I'm so glad when I come down to the end of my journey when I come down the press a dying pillar I got a blessing in death because hey hey he took the sting out of death is there anybody here who know my Jesus ain't he alright won't he make a way for ya hey benediction is designed yes, sir. Yes, sir. to provide a blessing for you. Yes. And you know, you know, I've been blessed today yes. because nobody left before I gave the benediction. Because yes. sometimes your blessing is in the benediction. The blessing for Jesus is they didn't have to break his legs because he was already dead. And one of the soldiers, they were so mean, they just wanted to make sure he was dead. And so they pissed him in the side, and out came spewing blood and water. What a blessing! Because there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Sinner can plunge beneath the flood and loose all of their guilt and stain. As we're standing up on our feet, there may be somebody here today who see your blessing just before you give the benediction and you want to walk for the Lord. Seven, eight churches represented here today and, and possibly more. You can choose either one. Christian discipleship and church membership. Is there one? even on this Good Friday. Oh, yes. You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come by letter. Or you can come on your Christian experience. The opportunity is yours. Amen, amen. What a mighty word. What a mighty time that we've had in the Lord. I want to thank all of these churches that's represented, and, and even if your pastor is not here today and your church is still represented, amen. If you are not a member of any of these seven, eight churches, would you stand that we may recognize you? If you don't see your pastor in the building, why don't you stand? Uh, not, inclu not including greater faith. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. 
So very, very much, all these pastors is going to, uh, amen. Y'all, y'all don't want to greet us? Y'all ready? Amen. Pastor Brown. I heard uh, some guys talking about their wives. I got one too. Oh. See, y'all, y'all, y'all don't play fair. I feel like Richard Roundtree in Roots. Cicely Tyson said, you can't, you can't hang with me because your dreams ain't big enough. And he dropped his head and those said, don't say I ain't got no green dreams. They might not be big as your dreams, but I got dreams. Let us stand. I am now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only one wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power let everybody say it. Go in peace and serve the Lord.